The Art Center inspires creativity and contributes to community well-being through equitable access to and engagement with visual arts. We collaborate to offer exhibitions, learning opportunities, artist development, and cultural events centered on art, artists, and art enthusiasts in the greater Corvallis area. Welcome everyone to TAC Makes. I'm Jenny Castle, and I'm here with Shagufta Mola, who is a uh, participant in the Evolution of Practice exhibition that is happening in the main gallery and in the Footwise window this month. Shagufta will be um, showing her work at Footwise starting April 28th, and she's here today to talk a little bit about her artistic practice over the past few years and um, her process of making work for this show. Shagufta, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about this. So will you start off maybe with discussing a little bit about how your practice changed after completing the Artist Accelerator Residency Program? Yes. So during the program, I was painting birds in acrylic. And one of the things that I really hadn't even thought about while I was painting is in acrylic is how fast you have to paint. <laughs> Because the paint doesn't stay open or wet for very long. And even though I was using medium, um, and I know that open um, or golden brand makes paint that stays open a little bit longer, uh, it still wasn't long enough. But my paintings for the show are in oil. And though I've added a fast medium, fast drying medium to it to help speed up the process, it definitely gave me more time to paint and to, to blend and to sit with what's happening. And the reason why this is significant is because having to paint quickly, like in acrylic, it paralleled the state of my nervous system that I lived in for almost my entire life. And so um, partly because I, I lived in basically fight, fight or flight mode for, for years and my profession, I'm a veterinarian, no longer in private practice, but my profession interestingly triggered all my unresolved trauma. <laughs> And so, and since I never talked about it, because I was one of those people back then who would just smile and say, I'm fine, <laughs> you know, and I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't realize what was going on. I didn't even have words for what was going on. And so, so painting quickly probably felt very normal at first, right? Like it, it felt, it was mimicking the patterns you'd already been in and it, eventually yes. you decided that you needed to change. Yeah. So in, yes, yeah. you're so used to hurry, hurry, hurry and move faster, faster, faster that you don't realize that I didn't realize I was still like stuck in that mode. Yeah. And so it definitely, I didn't know. Were you painting annoying. while you were work, working full time as a veterinarian or did you start painting after that? So I've been doing on art on and off yeah. since I was a kid, but I didn't do, interestingly, a lot of painting while I was working as a veterinarian. And you would think that you would because it would be a stress reducer and stuff. And I've, ex I've used all sorts of different mediums, ink and color pencil and that sort of thing. But oddly, there have been spans of time, like six, seven years, where I did not do a single thing yeah. art-wise. So... so um, <laughs> creatively at all. Like you, were, you didn't have space for it emotionally or mentally to be making. Correct. Yes, correct. I was just basically like in survival mode, <laughs> you know, and yeah. so, um, and creativity, I realized both during the residency and since then, even more so that for me, art works better for me or flows better when my life is in a state of flow yeah. as opposed to in a contracted state. So currently the art that I painted for this show, um, it's like the other side of the coin of the paintings that I did during my residency. And so the art that I currently um, have for the show are mostly bird skull uh, paintings, whereas the ones that I did for the air program were birds with their feathers on <laughs> and uh, they were still alive. <laughs> the skulls reflect having to strip down things that weren't working for me, things that were blocking flow, both in art and in life. And that meant I had to strip away um, 
how I was conditioned to be as a human being, just so many basic beliefs that you know you just grow up with, and that's just part of being human. So this isn't about blame; it's just about you know learning to be me as opposed to you know just operating out of conditioning and being on autopilot. And so the skull paintings are in oil, which I just love how the rich look of oil compared to acrylic as well. And I still, I love my paintings from my residency as well, but they're just so different. And I feel like they're more vibrant and they just have a different, like a depth to them that my other paintings didn't have visually and also just symbolically for myself. But the air program did help me get back into painting more regularly because as I had said before that there were huge gaps of time, years literally, where I did not do a single thing artistically as a veterinarian. I just didn't have the space for it in inside myself because I was so contracted from my trauma <laughs> and, and um, the unique ways that my profession um, triggered that, which was, I didn't view it as a gift then, but I do view it as a gift now because it was asking me to... Um, look within myself and see, you know, what is really you and what isn't you. And of course, that's helpful for life in general and not just art. <laughs> but So you um, ended your full-time practice as a veterinarian and then a couple years went by and then you decided to join the residency program. Were you making work during that time? And that's kind of what catapulted you towards maybe wanting to be part of a cohort at the art center? I left veterinary medicine at the end of 2018. And in 2019, I was working on art. That was actually when I started exploring with acrylic paint. And I kind of chuckle at the images I submitted with my air um, application. <laughs> because if I had seen that, um, I wouldn't have taken me. <laughs> Hey, you've evolved. That's that's I, what's great, right? You I totally to start somewhere. yes, I totally have evolved, and so I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity. But I was already creating art at that point. But I wanted to be part of a group. I missed with not being in a workplace. I missed having like a like a family, so to speak. So yeah. um, the air program definitely helped me get more back into the flow of painting. Yeah. So you finished that program and then continued on, obviously, because you're, you're making paintings for this current show, Evolution of Practice. Um, what additional growth happened after you left that cohort? I mean, it's so great to be able to collaborate and be around other artists. And then you go back into a vacuum if you're not careful, right? And you're in your own mind and your own practice and solitary a lot of the time. Yes. And so interestingly, also, since I left the program, there were times where I went back to not painting. And I think that paralleled um, my inner healing journey. There were times where which it was just it was all I could do to, you know, to get out of bed and function. And so painting wasn't happening for periods of time, but it definitely didn't go for as long as as before. And I've also experimented with more mediums as well. In fact, I learned how to work with oils a couple of years ago and then also did some self-learning <laughs> through some trial and error and paintings that have cracked. <laughs> Thankfully that not in anyone's homes. <laughs> 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 but um, I've seen the, some of the work you've been working on for the show that's going to open in a few weeks. You're right. They are vibrant and they have a rawness because of the subject matter you've chosen. But get this beauty that kind of emanates out of them. What do you hope is next for you? Do you have, do you have a plan? Do you have a hope for what you'll create next? So I love the palette that I'm using for these paintings. And Claire was the person who taught me about sticking with a palette um, during my air program because I was all over the place with my palette. It's like one painting was, you know, this palette and the next one was another palette. And so, so I just love this, um, this palette and I love sticking with it. And so I would like to continue on with the same palette. And I would like to actually paint other 
animal skull paintings as well like maybe like a ram because i would love to paint like the texture of horns or as well and so and and i would also like to get back to painting animals with you know their feathers and fur on as well but we'll see we'll see how that goes i feel like i might still incorporate um the skeletal themes because it's just been such a meaningful time for me to be able to get back to strip down and get back to who I am and not just knowing that as a in a in my headspace but to actually embody that in my whole body which has taken you know a few years now and so I feel the most comfortable in my skin and so we'll see what I bring you know to that's wonderful. I, I love um, listening to a journey parallel and artistic expression. That's like, it's so, uh, such a rich way to share who you are and how you've grown with your community. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. One question I wanted to ask you about your paintings is that I noticed that you kind of adorn your skulls with different um animals or plants and it almost like references an ecosystem that you can't fully see and I just wondered if there was any significance to the things that you choose to place um in in on the canvas with your with your subjects basically yeah I love this question Uh, it makes me little kid clap (laughs) (laughs) because um even though I'm painting them sometimes while I'm painting them even though I know what I want to paint I haven't maybe like actually sat and really thought about it. So I love that you asked this question. The crystals have kind of been a reflection of a change in my spiritual path. <laughs> and so I know that won't resonate with everyone, which is which is fine. Um, I think we're all here to be our own person and believe what we you know choose to, but that's what those reflect. And plus as a kid, I was one of those kids picking up rocks off of the playground and, and then I wanted a rock tumbler as a kid, you know, yeah. and stuff. And so that's what that that represents. I should have been a geologist, I think. <laughs> and There's still time. I, exactly. <laughs> and then the mushrooms represent, you know, kind of being in that cold, dark place, but there's still growth happening there. And, and there's so much happening below the surface as there is with fungi. Yeah. And then on one of the paintings, I added a snail and the snail is at the very tip of this bird's beak. And I painted the snail first and I even posted a meme on social media that had a bubble above the snail's head that said, I'm first. Because <laughs> you don't think of a snail as being fast or first. And I feel like I've always been that late bloomer, you know, <laughs> and so always behind. But again, that's part of just our conditioning. And it's like, I'm not behind. I'm right exactly where I'm supposed to be. And so the snail is out in the front. And I actually even painted a separate painting just for the snail. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just about celebrating my own pace, which has always been slower. And I didn't realize that while I was doing acrylic painting, but I am just, I must have been a bear in another life. I mean, they can all, <laughs> if they need to, <laughs> but you know, that's just that slow pace goes well with ease at a nervous system level, which is something I require in my life. That's so it's such a wonderful realization to have. And I think we, I think we all try to find what pace works best for us and keeps us healthy. Right. And yes. that doesn't always align with the demands of life. And so it's wonderful right. to hear you talk about balance and share that with everyone. Something I struggle with. I'm sure a lot of people struggle. Yes. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. In our society. Well, I'm very excited to install your work at the end of the month and see the final products. So you have to thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank, thank you, you so much, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tack Makes. This is a new creative project at the Art Center, and I hope you enjoy our learning curve as much as we do. You can find more episodes on YouTube and Spotify and on our website, theartscenter.net. That's arts with an S.